Okay. Rolling. Check, check. One, two. Oh my god. There's lens flare. I've never... I'm finally shooting in a room with natural light. And the first shot I set up. And there's actual lens flare. And I don't know what to do about it. We'll just call that an artistic choice and roll with it. So three years ago in January of 2018, I decided to start something that I had wanted to do for years, and that was make YouTube videos. I wanted to start a YouTube channel. And for years before that, I had talked myself out of it. I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I was capable or good enough or smart enough or a good enough player. There's a million reasons that I've made up in my mind of why I shouldn't start making YouTube videos. But in that January, uh, I started and my wife and I were living in a little two bedroom duplex in Decatur, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. And I started making videos in the spare bedroom. Now those early videos taught me a lot. They weren't great, but they did teach me that this is something that I really wanted to pursue. I loved making YouTube videos and talking about guitar and teaching people. And it was something that I really wanted to pursue. But not long after that, our lease went up and we weren't able to renew because of our landlord and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we decided to ask my parents if it was okay for us to move into their basement to start saving money to buy our own house. And we did. So we were down there for three years. And during that three years is really when I put my head down and started grinding away making YouTube videos and it worked. The channel grew. And if you've subscribed or seen any one of my videos before today, you've seen the space in my parents' basement. It was a storage closet. I was set up next to the hot water heater and the air conditioning system for the whole house. And I could only use half the room because of the Christmas decorations and storage for my parents' place. But I was really thankful to have the space. And so I made it work. And for three years, I made hundreds of videos down there um, all the while pursuing this idea of one day being able to buy a place of our own and set up my own space uh, to do my own work out of. Not just YouTube videos, but uh, music production and podcasts and all kinds of stuff. I wanted a space that was my own that I could create in every single day. And we're here. This is it. I literally just plugged in the last cable. That's what this video is about. Today, I'm going to show you the process. It's taken six whole days of full-time work to put this space together. It's still not done, but it's good enough for this video. Process started on May 12th when we signed the contract. We did the signing for this house and we started packing up. And it took me a few days, but I got most of my gear packed and moved out and unpatched from the storage closet in my parents' basement. And uh, yeah, that's where we're gonna pick it up. Okay, so this is the new room. We uh, started yesterday getting things sorted and unpacked. Uh, but today is the big day. Today is when we're building the new desk, getting everything wired, set up, and ready to start making videos. And Jesus, this thing's heavy. I don't know what's in here, but oh, metal apparently. So yesterday we unboxed all the pedals, got those organized. We got the new amp rack brought in and starting to get some stuff put on. We uncased a bunch of the guitars. So thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. Uh, they sent over the desk, they sent over a new pair of monitors, they sent over the acoustic treatment and a bunch of other stuff that we're gonna use to get this space dialed in correctly. So I'm gonna take you through the whole process today. Uh, and there's one big thing that I have to show you, but you're gonna have to wait towards the end of the video for that. So huge thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring today's video. As always, links to everything that I'm using in today's video and to get this room set up will be in the description box down below. Those are Sweetwater affiliate links. So if you buy something through there, I earn a small commission, which uh, quite honestly is gonna help pay for this new house. So uh, thanks for checking that out. First things we gotta do though is get all of these boxes brought up from the garage and set in here. One of them is crazy heavy, so I'm not gonna be able to do that by myself. But um, 
me take you on a quick tour of this room as it stands right now. Okay, so as you can see, we've got pedals sorted out by type. Chris took time yesterday to do all that, which is amazing. Uh, we're gonna try and figure out some kind of storage solution right here in the closet. As you can see, I've got my second guitar rack in here right now. So this is where pedals are gonna live. This is where cables, camera gear, lights, stand, everything is gonna live. And then what's cool about this room is there is a loft. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. Um, if you have any cool ideas of what to put up there, let me know in the comment section down below. Maybe plants or something, I don't know. This is the new amp rack. This is a piece of furniture we had in our living room and I hijacked it because it's gonna work perfectly for holding amps and running cables. The desk is either gonna go here along the shortest wall in the room or here in the corner. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute because the roof line is pitched in here. Oh, and by the way, I installed that fan yesterday. First time I've ever installed a ceiling fan. It went great that I actually installed three other ceiling fans in the house. And now uh, I'm basically Bob Vila and I'm thinking about changing this channel over to a uh, home improvement channel because I mean, come on. So first task is to get all the stuff brought up, unboxed, sorted, and uh, ready to start putting together. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna get to work on is putting the desk together. Now, I'm really excited about this. This is a new piece from a company called Gator Frameworks. Um, it's a pretty sleek, kind of modern look, I think is gonna go well with the other furniture in this room. And I got the desk plus a sidecar. Uh, so I can have some rack gear uh, and things like that. And there's also a piece that connects the desk to the sidecar, so it's all one piece and sort of like an L configuration. So I'm really excited to see what that looks like. I wanna get this together first because everything else in this room is gonna revolve around the desk placement. Also, it's gonna have a huge impact on where I place my acoustic treatment. But before we do that, I wanna get the desk unboxed and built, so let's get to work. Nice color. Aha! Directions. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, for some reason, FedEx decided not to deliver all the packages at once. And even better than that, uh, this one is in really rough shape. And I just pulled out some kind of broken piece. So, uh, way to go, FedEx. So that broke one of the legs. Hopefully we can just make that work for the time being until I can get a replacement. Cause I have to put this together today so that I can get to work. Um, <laughs> this whole room project, we're now three days in, it still looks like this. I did, however, get the pedal shelf completed. Check this out. There we go. So top we have overdrive distortion, then fuzz overdrive distortion, modulation, more modulation, then reverb and delay. The pedal boards are down there. So that's one win uh, from this project so far, but can't say I'm too pleased with FedEx at the moment. Now check back in when it's getting closer done. Okay, so one thing I can already tell that I'm gonna really dig about this desk is the cable management. Now, my old desk that I've been using for about seven or eight years was great, but if you ever saw the backside of it, you know it was a complete rat's nest of cables. But what this company has done, which is pretty cool, is given you some cable management options. So there's this basket thing. This is the underside of the desk, obviously. This basket here, which will let you man manage cables coming off the back of the desk, but What's even cooler than that is each one of the legs is hollow and you can run your cabling through the leg itself. Now I'm really excited about that because I think with the white walls and the light colored floors in here, 
cables, uh, loose cables are gonna stick out like a sore thumb. And I wanna keep everything nice and clean looking in here for the camera. So I think this is gonna work out really well. Okay, well, that's the main part done, the main desk basically done. Uh, overall, it went together pretty easily. I will say there's a few parts where the instructions are vague, like way too vague, and it caused me to have to undo and redo a few different steps because you just can't really tell from the picture is what you're supposed to do. So hopefully Gator can address that. But overall, I think it looks really great. It's super solid. I'm excited about the cable management setup. And what's cool about this desk is when you do the rack topper here, you can do it in two different configurations. You can have two rack setups, one on the left and one on the right, or you can set it up for just one in the middle. So depending on how much rack gear you have or how much rack gear you think you're gonna get at some point in the future, uh, you can set your desk up accordingly. You ever just sit and have a stare? So here's what I'm thinking. Desk is here. I play right-handed. When I'm working, okay. I also have to think about camera angles in here too. I think, I think that's the next step, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so it's now the morning of day four on this project, which is now starting to become an issue because I'm way behind schedule um, and I need to get this wrapped up so I can get to work on some other projects. But I stayed up last night, I got most of the gear racked up, still waiting on a few pieces to arrive from Amazon, but I wanna take this time to kind of walk you through the gear that I'm using and uh, sort of the idea behind the workflow of this space. This is something that I've put a lot of thought into over the last few months, really, in preparation for moving. Um, and there's some issues with my old space that really, really sucked dealing with on a daily basis that I really want to alleviate in this space. So let me show you kind of what I'm working with here. Okay, so starting with the main desk, um, pretty simple setup, pretty clean. And you'll notice the theme here that I actually didn't anticipate and I didn't plan on, but it's sort of happening. Lots of black, white, and gray happening here. So in the two rack spaces here, I've got the two modelers that I use most often, the Axe FX3 and my Helix. Uh, I like having them up in front of me where I can see them, where I can see how things are laid out on the screen, even though I mainly use the software editors uh, for both of those. In this space, there's gonna go a new power conditioner that I have to go pick up from Guitar Center. Got the Apollo X4 on the desk. That's gonna be my primary interface. I got a new pair of audio monitors to work with. I got the HS7s from Yamaha with the powered sub. I've really gotten used to working with a sub in my old space and I didn't wanna go without one, so. And then up top, we've got the Torpedo Captor X in its uh, trusty position, which is gonna be used to run the amp rack here. And then we have the sidecar. Now my favorite feature about this sidecar is the pullout shelf and it fits this mono pedal board perfectly. My plan for this board is to just have it set up here permanently where I've got pedals swapped in and out for whatever I might be working on at the time. Have the Zuma power supply there, and that's run into the power conditioner for this rack. And then below that is the main piece of gear that's gonna be running this whole operation. So first up in the rack, we have the 4710D from Universal Audio. Now this, 
I'm really excited about. And this is effectively gonna act as like the centerpiece for the whole studio here. This is a four channel mic preamplifier. Each channel has a transistor based circuit or a tube. There's a 12AX7 in each channel. And you can actually blend between them to get a blend of the tube warmth and the bite of a transistor for you know your mics that you might be singing into or talking into or guitar lines, whatever. And each channel also has a built in 1176 style compressor circuit where you only have control over the attack time. The ratio and all the other controls are set for you, uh, but still, I love 1176s. I use them all the time. Uh, you have four DI inputs on the front, so you have a DI for each channel. You can go direct in with guitar, bass, or whatever. This is going to solve a big issue for me that the old space had, which was a workflow issue. See, over the course of a day, I may be recording a podcast, then working on a video, then practicing guitar or recording guitar for something. And every time I would do something new in my old space, I would have to completely break down and set up. I'd have to place mics, I'd have to patch stuff in, move lights around. It was a huge pain, it was a huge waste of time. And so with this new space, I want to try and alleviate that. I wanna have stuff permanently patched, ready to go for whatever I might be working on. So with that in mind, what I'm gonna do with this unit, the 4710, is leave my podcast mic uh, patched into channel one, my shotgun mic that I use for all my videos patched into channel two, and then channels three and four will more than likely be the Torpedo Captor X and the amp rack. This way when I'm working on stuff, I can quickly switch between two completely different workflows, completely different projects without having to change stuff around. It should save me a lot of time and a lot of headache. Now, the other cool thing about the 4710 is it also has built-in converters, and that's a huge part of why I went with this piece of gear because I'm gonna use that to essentially add four more channels onto my Apollo X4. Now, the reality is in here when it's just me working by myself, I don't typically use eight channels at a time, but when you factor in the fact that I wanna have stuff patched permanently and not have to deal with a patch bay and things like that, it makes a lot of sense. So what I'm gonna do is use this as a mic preamp and a converter, and I'm gonna run an optical out into the X4, which will leave the four channels on my X4 open to patch in things like the modelers, for example, or any microphone that I might wanna use in the room, or maybe mics to run to a guitar cabinet in another room in a house. I have some options to work with there. Okay, so now we're at the fun part. Um, well, it'll be the most challenging part, which is starting to hang the acoustic treatment. Um, got Chris over here, he's gonna help me out. This is gonna be a lot of measuring. But before we hang anything, I actually wanna do a bit of a before and after comparison. So what I've done is set up my Zoom H6 in the middle of the room, we're using the XY capsule on the front, and we're just gonna kind of clap in different parts of the room and hopefully get a good sense of the difference, uh, what the difference is actually making. I want this space to feel nice and dry because when I'm talking to camera, I don't like a lot of reverberation in the room. So uh, we're gonna use as much of the paneling as we can to really tighten this space up. Um, in fact, let's go look at the paneling that we've got. So for the acoustic treatment, we went with Prime Acoustic. This is also provided by Sweetwater. They're pre-made and pre-wrapped, um, ready to hang on the wall. They come in different kits for a different sized room. We went with the London 12 kit, which is enough for a decent medium sized room. And I also have some other 703 panels that we built years and years ago that I've had forever that uh, we might end up using on top of the prime acoustic panels. Uh, but we're gonna hang these first, get those lined up and uh, see how we do. Okay, so this is the room with the furniture set up before the acoustic treatment. Oh, actually, I am noticing a flutter echo now. Yeah, it's happening up there. Okay, cool. Okay, so we've got the panels placed out roughly where we think we wanna have them. We're gonna start with the big two by four panels in the corners. Then we're gonna use these columns. These are one foot by four foot along either wall on either side of the mix position to grab angle of first reflection and help dry up the space. Then we have 12 
of the one foot by one foot squares. And we're gonna wait on those to see where we think they're gonna work best. And then I have seven of these panels. These are the panels that I made years and years ago. These are two foot by four foot wooden frames with a sheet of Owens Corning 703 on the inside. Um, and what we're gonna do is send Chris up the ladder into the loft and just start stacking these up there. I'm also gonna take one of these and hang it under the window directly behind the desk just to grab some of the reflections coming off behind the speakers. I can already tell just by having the panels in here, just kind of around, it's already quite a bit drier, um, but there's still a ways to go. So we're gonna start uh, hanging the first ones. Yeah. Is there a emergency contact number I should know? 911. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is freaky. <laughs> I don't even know what's up there. Dust. Oh, good. It's also carpeted. Yeah. Start with just either side of the, just in the corners, just yeah. line up in the corners. Nice. Or, riddle me this, can you turn them like flat against that wall and flat against that wall? Is there only wide enough to get there? Now, another one can fit there. Yeah, oh, there you go. You got this. Oh. This top of the the top of the ladder is not attached to the railing, so it really feels like you're gonna rip it off the wall. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You want right here too? Yeah. If you're gonna do this job at home. One of these little suction cup laser level things is a godsend. So we just ran a laser line. Uh, down the wall with the bottom of where the panels are going to be and we've marked that so we know it's nice and straight and we're just going to knock this whole wall out in one go. Seriously, this is like the best tool ever. Right, so we got a seven foot space here to cover, seven and a half. If you leave four or five inches there, these are foot wide so that leaves you a three foot remaining of uncovered space. You just got to figure out how far you want to space them apart. So if you did... Um, six inches apart, four feet, then a, then a foot in between, so five, six feet, or we could come a foot off the wall here. And you got four panels, so that's 12 inches each with four inches between them. So four times 12 is 48, three times four is 12. So that takes us to um, 60 inches, plus 12 is 72. How about I do for a single reflection, and then space it out, having a foot there, or shift closer, all right, so you get situated. Yeah, that's, that's only... <laughs> this is very professional. Yeah, I know, I know. And apparently we can't drop that because that's expensive making. So. so it depends on where you are, right? Because if I sit back yeah. here... Yeah, well, normally you, you're going to be sitting back a little bit. I back. mean, well, if I'm, if I'm like okay. sitting at my desk, you know, come back. Aesthetically, it depends on what you like better. You'll be further down. But do we need to be concerned about like the second angle reflection? Third angle is really just the first one. Things that come down my way. Down, down, down. All right, right there. I'm gonna push it in, then I'm gonna pull it down. Okay. My level. Uh, yep. Okay. Right there. There you go. Okay. There it is. Yeah, pretty level two. Huh? Not bad. Seven more to go. <laughs> So after six straight days of work, <laughs> um, it's finally done. Well, as close to being done as I'm gonna get it in this video. And looking around at the space right now, I'm a little, um, I didn't think I would ever have this. I, I didn't think this would ever be something that was uh, a possibility for me. And I didn't think that starting a YouTube channel uh, and, and doing this would be what allowed this space to exist. Um, and also, as promised, here is the new uh, super scientific clap test with the new acoustic treatment. This is exactly where it was before. 
and uh, everything else is the same, so here it goes. So it's definitely better, but I think I am going to end up hanging some clouds on the ceiling up here just to dry up the space a little bit. The flutter echo is all but gone, which is really nice. I think adding the treatment up in the loft is really what did that. But as it is, the space actually sounds really, really nice. So the space is going to be a work in progress for a little while. Um, I've still got stuff to move and set up and things to tweak and experiment with, with camera angles and lighting and sound and things like that. But I wanted to take this opportunity to just say thank you. Thank you to everyone who has watched the channel over the last three years and subscribed and supported not just me, but Tilly and uh, and now Chris, our new production assistant. We couldn't have moved into this place and we wouldn't be doing what we're doing now without you guys. And for that, I am incredibly thankful. And uh, I, I never thought when I started off making YouTube videos in our little duplex three years ago that uh, this is where we would end up and this is where we would be headed. And I'm, <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you. That's, that's all I can say. But there's one other thing to add here. This isn't the end of the project. Building this room isn't it. There's actually a bigger project that we're gonna be working on here on this YouTube channel over the course of the next year, probably. And like this room, this project coming up is something that I've also been dreaming about for years and years. Uh, it's scary, it's daunting, it's gonna be massive, but we're at the end of the video and I feel like I should just show it to you. <laughs> so this is a big reason of why we decided to buy this house this basement is going to be our future recording studio now admittedly it doesn't look like very much now but give this place about a year and some elbow grease and i think we're gonna have a pretty sweet setup down here and because i like making youtube videos i plan on documenting the entire process in a big multi-part series. Think uh, this old house, instead of renovating old colonial homes up near Boston, we're gonna be renovating a 1970s dingy basement, turning it into a vibey recording studio. So this old home studio, if you will. Now, we're gonna start this project really soon, but I've never built a recording studio before, and so this is gonna be a bit of a learning process for not just me, but Tilly and Chris and everyone involved. We're talking to some sponsors about coming on board. Um, we've got a builder picked out. We're gonna start demoing and working on the space real soon, but I need some help. If you or anyone you know is a studio designer, if you've ever done this kind of thing professionally or for a living, uh, please email me <laughs> because um, while I know a little bit about how to hang acoustic treatment, I don't know how to make a recording studio. So uh, we're gonna enlist the help of some friends and some people that we know, but if you want to chip in, uh, email me, link down below. Let me show you around a little bit real quick. So we're definitely gonna keep the bar. My mountain bike is not gonna stay down here permanently. This will be the live room. Right now, this is a pseudo bedroom, uh, and we're considering either knocking these walls down and opening the space up to one big live room, or, making this one big ISO room with two sliding glass doors on either wall. Uh, if you have thoughts on that one way or another, let me know in the comment section. Then down here, through these two doors, this wood shop will be the control room. Down there on that end of the room will be the desk, maybe a console one day, who knows. We're gonna completely build this room in, floating w floors, walls, ceiling, the whole deal, possibly putting a window in here to look into the live room. And there's a few other things to show you, but that'll come in the first video of us building the space. So 
This is probably my longest video I've ever made. If you've made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. Once again, you're the reason that we're doing all this. So huge, huge thank you. Um, again, thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this episode with all the new gear upstairs. I couldn't do this without them. Everything I'm using is linked down below in the affiliate links. And I think she's eating a roach. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, I'll see you guys real soon on the next video. Oh, and remember, <laughs> almost forgot, uh, there's no plan B.